Hey, what is up, everybody? This is your boy, AJ Tripp, and welcome to the Game According to Me podcast. As always, we're going to talk about going down on college football on Saturday and freshman football on Saturday and, of course, the Monday Night Football game last night. Some interesting matchups over the weekend on college football. Um, some victories, some losses, a whole bunch of other good things. Um... Before that, we're going to go ahead and we're going to take a quick look at the Major League Baseball playoffs. The season is over, and uh, we'll take a look back and maybe we'll look at not only at the playoffs that are coming up, but also maybe look at some of the, like, you know, things that are happening. All right, so here's how it looks off for the playoffs. Um, the Chicago White Sox are going to take on the Houston Astros. Uh, and the Atlanta Braves are taking on the Milwaukee Brewers. Uh, in the wild cards, um, St. Louis and the LA Dodgers are, 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 are going to play. And the Boston Red Sox and the New York Yankees are going to play. The winner of those teams, of those series, no, not a series, it is those games. Uh, Boston Yankees, the winner, takes on Tampa Bay Rays. Um, Dodgers and St. Louis um, takes on the Giants. Now, th- we could have a situation with the Dodgers who won a hundred and some hundred some odd games. They lose to St. Louis in a one game playoff. Will we'll be out of the playoffs and have to win over a hundred and some odd games. That's insane. <laughs> it is insane. But the, the, the St. Louis has been on a roll. St. Louis has been on a roll since the end of the, 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 um, the, end of the season. At one point, they won 17 straight games. It's, it's incredible what they're doing. They they shut them down and, and took that second wild card spot from, from each and every person. Um, Yankees in Boston and get another. This this could be another incredible point into the rivalry. You know they they've they've had game 163s. They've had uh, they they've had the course the ALCSs back to back in 2003 and 2004. Uh, some memorable seasons and seasons and series on these uh, two clubs, and now here we are. Uh, they're in the wild card game, and uh, this could be incredible. So, let's looking back really quick um, the, uh, at some of the stat leaders. Uh, the leader in home runs. Was um, Guerrero, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. in Toronto, and Salvador Perez in Kansas City both hit 48 home runs. And Perez in Kansas City, it was incredible because he he was at some point he was on a roll as well. He was just he was he went like several days where he just hit a home run, and uh, so he was had been on a roll. They had 48. They led the American League and the Major Leagues. Leader in the NL was Fernando Tatis. He had 42. And he had actually also missed some days as well. He had missed some days. The batting average, Yuri Guerrero, he uh, hit 319. Um, so, uh, uh, at 37, he has tied Barry Bonds as the oldest player to win his first league batting title. So, um that's something special, but um, the leader in the National League and Major League was Trey Turner of the Dodgers. He hit 328. He is a free agent, I believe, right? That they got, they got the, the Dodgers required Don Trey Turner at the trade deadline from the Nationals, and I believe he's a free agent. Um, the RBIs, the Major League hitter leader, was on Salvador Perez. He had 121. Um, that's good to see because the last couple of years there's been some where the leading RBIs have been like 110, you know, you know, and, and a, you know 105. This it's you know I remember when I first started getting into baseball, the, the leaders were like 120, 130. So yeah, this is this is remember, remember that one year Manny Ramirez had 150, 160 some RBIs. It's insane. Um. Leader in the NL, Adam Duvall of Atlanta. He had 113. Uh, stolen bases, Starlin Marte of Oklahoma. He had 47. Some people say stolen bases is is is, is, is 
because of the analytics and everything like that, is being pushed out of the league. Hopefully, it is coming back. Um, uh, um, you know, then Whit Merrifield, he had 40 of the Kansas City Royals. In the NL, it was, again, it was Trey Turner. He had 32. Um, and for the pitchers, uh, the leader in wins was uh, Garrett Cole. He had um, 16 for the Yankees. And in the NL, Julio Urias. Um, he lived up to his potential finally. He's a, first, he's a 20 game winner. So that's good. 20 game wins for Julio Urias. In the, in the uh, AL, the leader in ERA was Robbie Ray from Toronto, you know, 2.84. And in the ML and Major League, it was Corbin Burns. <laughs> and it, it, it reminds me of the guy from LA Law, Corbin, Corbin Benson, I think his name was, Corbin Burns. He had a 2.43 2.4, ERA. Strikeouts, Robbie Ray, again, he led AL and the Majors with so, uh, 2.48. And in the NL, it was Zach Wheeler of Pittsburgh with 247. Saves from the AL was Liam Hendricks. He had 38. Um, and in the NL and MLB, San Diego's Mark Melanson. He had 39. So, it, it, an incredible season. It's got to be an incredible season again when, the, when they're a wild card team with 100 some odd wins. Incredible season. We'll see what happens as it all play out. I will be covering the MLB playoffs right here on the podcast. So make sure you continue to listen. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be uh, a pretty interesting playoff season for sure, especially with the Astros. And we're going to see can the Astros actually win without um, Bay. Then now let's get to why we're here. Football. As always, we start with the NCAA. Um, looking back on week five. The um, Iowa Hawkeyes beat Maryland 51-14. to BYU beat Utah State 34-20. Texas slipped by TCU 32-27. Uh, Georgia put out Arkansas 37-0. But Michigan put on Wisconsin 38-17. They forced Louisville 37-34. Cincinnati beat Notre Dame 24-13. Coastal Carolina beat up on Louisiana Monroe, 59-6. Ohio State beat up on Rutgers, 52-13. Oklahoma State once again slipped by Kansas State, 37-31. Alabama beat up, beat up on Michigan, no, but Mississippi, excuse me, 42-21. Stanford lost a close one to, um, no, no, they beat Oregon. I was trying to say Oregon. I apologize. Um, they beat Oregon in final overtime 31-24. SMU beat on South Florida 41-17. NC State uh, beat uh, Louisiana Tech 34-27. Kentucky with upset over Florida 20-13. Oklahoma State beat Baylor in the Battle of the Unbeaten 24-14. Penn State shut out Indiana 24-0. Michigan State had had their way with Kentucky, with the Kentucky 48-31. Auburn Beat Louisiana State, um, or LSU as you call them. I call them Louisiana State. I, that's, I don't even know. I, I don't know, but that was okay. Bo Nix had a hell of a game uh, on 24 to 19, and Arizona State beat up on UCLA, 42 to 23. Now, as we come to week six, eee. oh, ooh, well, oh, I do see a game here that could be something. So let's go ahead and let's look them out here. Uh, Coastal Carolina taking on Augusta State Thursday. Temple taking on um, Cincinnati. Cincinnati now ranked number five. If Cincinnati can go all of the way through undefeated, they may have a shot. They may have a shot of making the uh, the college football playoff. Arizona State has Stanford. Uh, they should be on the upset alert. It's obviously the, uh, Stanford beat Oregon, so Arizona State needs to be on that upset alert. Ohio State playing Maryland. Uh, Texas and Oklahoma, the Red River uh, shootout. Um, you know, they might call it the Red River rivalry now. They may not want shootout because of the gun thing and everything like that. I don't know. But, yes, yeah, the Red River rivalry. Um, Florida has Vanderbilt. Um, Mississippi and Arkansas. They just they just came off the loss of probably the two best teams in, in the world. 
Georgia and Alabama. Now they're going to face each other. Michigan State has Rutgers. Um, BYU and Boise State is playing. Um, Wake Forest and Syracuse, Syracuse. SMU and Navy. Georgia and Auburn. Um, what is, there, is it the Deep South's oldest rivalry? I think that's what that's called. Georgia and Auburn. So that should be a... Uh, that should be something in that in that uh, in that 3:30 uh, window. Um, you have Penn State in uh, Iowa. That this is probably the game of the the week here. Number three, Iowa. Number four, Pittsburgh. They're they're both uh, undefeated, and uh, someone someone has to lose. There's no no more ties in college football, so someone has to lose, and um, I think that's going to go a long way into. Helping Cincinnati make it as well. It is, you know, here's the thing about Cincinnati. Um, they're ranked number five in the in the in the, in the polls, right? But I, I I don't know how the committee is going to look at Cincinnati when they get through and they come through everything, right? So, you know, you have Alabama one, Georgia two, Iowa three, Penn State four. Uh, you know, Cincinnati is five. Uh, I mean, you look at Oklahoma is also six. Iowa, uh, Ohio State with a loss is seven. Um, Michigan is nine. Is Oregon eight? Uh, yeah, or in Oregon is eight. So in the in the eight in, in the polls, I guess that's eight people. Cincinnati is ahead of Ohio State who lost. Oregon who lost, and um. Michigan, who is undefeated, and Oklahoma, who is undefeated. So what I, what I wonder is is that with one of the, with one of those you know with one of those four teams jump Cincinnati at some point. But they jump Cincinnati at some point. Could you know, could multiple teams jump? Does Cincinnati have a bad game against Temple, right? They should beat Temple, but what they have, like, like, let's say they have a bad game and they beat Temple thirteen to ten on a last second field goal. Ohio State blows out Maryland. Oklahoma blows out Texas. You know, um, Nebraska, Michigan blows out Nebraska. You know, you no, know, would, would those teams jump ahead of Cincinnati? I, that's what I wonder. And would, would, and would the committee look at Cincinnati and go? Yeah, they're not ready yet. So, I don't know. Uh, right now, they have a inside track, I would think, of being in the college football playoff. Um, which I would think you would. I think what you would probably do for me, if I was going to do a top four, the top four teams to me are Georgia, Alabama, Iowa, and Cincinnati, with Penn State and. Michigan being in the uh, being being the two first two out. That's that's what I would do. That's what that's what that's how I would vote. Um, so it's gonna be it's very it's a very interesting thing to see. But uh, that Penn State Iowa State game, Penn, yeah, no Penn State Iowa, not Iowa State Iowa is gonna be from fascinating. Like um, we mentioned, Michigan taking on Nebraska, Kentucky and LSU will go at it. Virginia Tech and Notre Dame, Texas A and M and Alabama, and then San Diego State in New Mexico. So. Uh, those are the games. Um, and by the way, for any of those who uh, who may wonder, like why do you, why does he just choose again? I I, I I I choose the top the games of the top twenty five. That's the that's the that's what I do. The, the the games that involve top twenty five teams are the the games I usually you know I, I recap and I then I talk about in the future. So so yeah, uh, this week because football. Really doesn't look like much, but there could be some good games. Oklahoma, Texas, Arkansas, Mississippi, Penn State, Iowa. And then we also have to see on Friday what Cincinnati does with Temple. So uh, is, there, is some, there is some intrigue there. But hell, it's college football. Who knows what could happen? We can see upsets galore again. And I love it. All right, so now let's go back and look at this. Of the National Football League last Thursday, the Bengals came from behind and beat the Jacksonville Jaguars. 
beat him up so bad that it caused Urban Meyer to go to a club and have a girl dance on him. <laughs> he came out yesterday and apologized for that and um, apologized to the team for being a distraction, apologized to his family. Some people are calling for Urban Meyer's job. I don't think that needs to be the case. Although Darren Olowski made kind of a good point the other day, yesterday on NFL Live. He said that if, if, if you know, you know how you know how am I as a player supposed to believe you when you're saying that you do the right thing? You know, you know if you you know you you, know, you do the right thing, you know when you weren't doing the right thing, and I, and I can understand that from where he's coming from. My other thing is, is that, that I, you know, you don't know if he was doing anything wrong. Now you might say, well, he's got a he's a married man having a young girl dance on him, but you don't know Urban Meyer relationship with his wife. You know, when you are a celebrity, no matter how young, no matter how old, there are times you can have a you can have a relationship, you know, you can be relationship, you can be married, but it also have that agreement that, okay, yeah, do your stuff on the side, you know, but just don't embarrass me, you know, don't don't embarrass me and don't bring bring nothing home to me, you know what I'm saying? So, and that could have been a relationship, but Earl Meyer should have known better. Than to to probably you know they're in public with it if, if there was that type of thing so and and and, the, and that's not wrong so uh, it, it's 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 this it's a whole situation um the so match not a Sunday and a great overtime victory the Jets get their first one beating the Titans twenty seven twenty four um. Incredible! Uh, we saw the end of it. Uh, they gave us the end of it on CBS. Um, fascinating. Um, the Bears beat the Lions 24-14. Lions are gonna lion. Went down, had three trips into the into the um, into the uh, red zone. It, actually, into inside the ten yard line. They couldn't come away with any points. And then and at the end of the game with 24-14, they tied, decided to go for it on fourth and three instead of for kicking the field goal. I think uh, uh, the Lions are just gonna lie. They need to learn to win, and uh, Dan Campbell might, might might be the guy to do that. They do play hard for this dude. On the Colts, uh, they got on track. They beat the Dolphins, 27 to 17. Um, Dolphins are now one and three, and they are just, you know, they're not. You know, we thought you know, two was hurt, obviously, but still, we thought the Dolphins were going to be a little bit better than this. Um, the Browns beat the Vikings 14 to 7, and they, they, they got 14 in a whole way. They scored a touchdown, got a two point conversion, kicked two field goals. Okay, 14, 13 7 Browns. Um, Washington beat the Falcons 34 30. Taylor Heineke, well, I, 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 I don't know, you know, if Taylor Heineke can, you know, can be, can be truly. A, 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 a franchise quarterback. Yeah, but this is a guy who I think could possibly be like your, you know, he, he could be he could be the guy that keeps the thing in charge and keeps you rolling while you while your your you know while your you know rookie quarterback next year would you know will be sitting on the you know the sidelines learning. So that's good. The Bills shut out the Texans. Second, uh, second shutout of the season for the Bills, 40 to nothing. Bills defense has been incredible. The offense is now starting to get on track. They're, 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 this team is getting ready to become scary really quick. Giants beat the Saints in overtime, 27-21. Um, <laughs> Jarrell Peppers went at the ball, and we're going to fucking win. Uh, that, was, that was a very interesting one. The Chiefs look like the Chiefs again. Beat the Eagles, 42-30. to Tyreek Hill had... Third, five touchdowns. Uh, no, he had three touchdowns. Patrick Mahomes is the one that had five touchdowns. He passed for five. Um, looking like themselves. Way to go, Chiefs. Um, Panthers and the Cowboys. Cowboys with the Panthers, 36 to 28. Um, Sam Donald leads the league in rushing touchdowns. If you guys didn't know that, Sam Donald. That's Sam Donald. He does. Uh, Cowboys. They looking like a, a a monster in the NFC. Um, 
and that's that's very interesting. Um, the Seahawks beat the 49ers 28-21. Jimmy Garoppolo went out with an injury. Trey Lance came in. Um, Jimmy, Garoppolo, Jimmy Garoppolo said that it might be a, it was, it might be a couple weeks, but um, yeah, Shanahan said that he actually could actually play. Uh, maybe this upcoming week, so maybe the calf injury that he sustained isn't that bad. Uh, and Russell Wilson still has not lost three games in a row. So, <laughs> speak some stuff, stuff on that man's name. <laughs> well, the Rams shockingly beat the Cardinals 30. No, 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 no there's actually the opposite. Excuse me, the Cardinals shockingly beat the Rams 37 to 20. Um, and uh, the Cardinals are the only undefeated team left in the National Football League. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, and Kyler Murray's playing his, his, his butt off. And, um, you know, I got to say, you know, I think, you know, I think Kyler Murray in this system now is working. So, um, and I think I think they're going to prove that this air raid system that we're seeing in, in you know, in the college football system never, that would never work. Is, is, is working and uh, they've already it, it slowly come in with you no know, teams using way more shotgun than they ever than they ever did before you know but this is you know continue to prove that you know this this has a place in the NFL uh, they only have the right talent and I think Kyle Murray is one of those right 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 talented people you know being 510 it's a lot easier for him to do the Short passes, although he's been throwing long passes. All he had a long pass in that game to AJ Green for a touchdown. So, um, but yeah, and he's also mobile. He runs around like crazy. So, good, you know, good on them. Packers beat the Steelers 27-17. Ben Roethlisberger is just not looking like himself. Uh, this this should be Ben's last season. I think I think at some point, Mike Tomlin may bench Ben Roethlisberger this 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 season. I really do believe that, and um. Because he just he's 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 not able to move well, he, he, he moves around a little bit, but he he's, he's you can tell that he's he's not the guy from ten years ago, not even the guy from five years ago. Um, when and that guy threw for almost five thousand yards, or maybe he did throw for five thousand yards. I can't remember, but yeah, it, it's um it's kind of hurtful to see Big Ben like he is, his Hall of Fame um, player. And um, then I'm go down like this. It's uh, it's it sucks. The Ravens beat the Bron Broncos 23 to seven. Interesting part of this game is that at the end of the game, uh, the 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 um, the Ravens were two yards away, two or three yards away from having 100 rushing yards, and that would have been 43 consecutive games with a hundred uh, with a, with 100 rushing yards as a team. So when the Broncos went for it on fourth down and and at the end of the game and, and they uh, and and they failed, the Ravens came in to to you know to to, to go in there and instead of taking knee, they they, met, they ran a, a sweep quarterback sweep with, with Jackson to get the to, you know to get the, the the yards to pick up the yardage for the record and the coaches yesterday were talking and jabbing at each other, you know, Vic Fangio was saying that they were, you know, that was, it was, you know, that's what they do, and they don't care about player safety, and yada, 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 and then, you know, John Harbaugh was talking about, you know, there's no, no you know, there's no 16-point touchdowns in the league and everything like that, so, I don't know, this, this, this may last, though, I don't know how, I don't know how long Vic Fangio is going to last in, in Denver, but, um, I'm sure no matter what, there's still gonna be players and they, players on the team from this game the next time the Ravens play the Broncos, and uh, I, I I wonder if they are I wonder if they will um remember this. Uh, in the in the in the thing in the game that was deemed the return, Tom Brady and the Buccaneers come back to England take on the New England Patriots. And uh, it was not, it was it was a very close game. Patriots came came it close, but unfortunately, what they couldn't do uh, what is they couldn't make the last field goal. Nick Folk missed it. And the Buccaneers, you know, they sneaked out a win, nineteen to seventeen. Um, it was a very emotional day for I think everybody, probably everybody there. Um, 
you know, for Robert Kraft, for Bill Belichick, for Jonathan Daniels, and for Tom Brady. So, um, very good in that game. Tom Brady broke the passing record, even though we did not know he broke it. Because we, 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 we heard at one point that it was a catch. He was two yards away, and then he was one yard away. He took a timeout, and when he came back, he had had the record. So, I, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's the, who knows what, 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 what happened with that. But, um, Buccaneers won, and, uh, they'll, they'll go on to do their thing this week. And then last uh, week, uh, the Raiders, last night, not last week, last night, the Raiders lost to the Chargers 28-14, stopping their unbeaten streak. And the Chargers are still looking good. And, boy, it's, uh, we got some good young quarterbacks in this league. And Justin Herbert may be at the top of the list. He is, he is, uh, he is incredible. To see, to see what he did yes last year and what he's doing now, it's insane. And he's probably would be one of the top five quarterbacks, you know, by the end of the season. It's just, it's just incredible to see him come out and play the way he has played. Uh, now to go to here to week five, uh, looking looking at that um, Thursday night game is the Rams and the Seahawks. This is the, this is where Fox starts their. Their um, their broadcast and Fox has a good one with the Rams and the Seahawks. Um, Seahawks have a win. Rams coming off the loss. Rams looking to get back on track. Seahawks looking to keep it continue. Um, on Sunday, the Jets at the Falcons. Both teams looking to um, try to try to get on the roll. We, we talked we talked about Ben Roethlisberger. We maybe talk about Matt Ryan too because Matt Ryan may be on on that on that line that you know who knows what is. You know, uh, next for him because you know they didn't draft a quarterback this year, but he has not looked good. You know, in any of his games, really, it's not looked like uh, in the Matt Ryan of old. So it, it's gonna wonder what what what, what is gonna be happening with, with Matt Ryan. Uh, the Patriots and the Texans. This should be a, a good good back on track game for the Patriots. Um, I don't think they'll shut them out like Buffalo will, but they, this 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 should be a game where. Mac Jones can, you know, can, you know, can, and the, and the whole Patriots crew, you know, can feel better about themselves again. Vikings and the Lions, this is, you know, like, again, the Lions are going to play hard, but the Lions are going to do something to, they're going to do something to where Kirk Cousins and the Raiders of the Vikings are going to, are going to, uh, make a play and, uh, and win the game, you know, or something like that. And let me check here, because, uh, because Kirk Cousins, he had a, um, he had a, um, he had a streak of 17 games with the, with a, with a, um, then he gave it a quarterback rating over 90. So, um, hmm. Didn't say here. Nope. It, it, it ended. It ended. It, it ended uh, Sunday against Cleveland. He had a rating of 66. So, um, but yeah, but he'll probably get start a new one against the Lions. Uh, Eagles and the Panthers. Panthers need to um, make a comeback. Uh, Eagles still learning. Jenna Hurts. He's, he's 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 okay. I don't know if he's no. He's still learning as well. He's still this is his second year in the league, so he's still making his way around the the league. So using his athleticism a lot, um, but sometimes he getting in trouble. And that game it was a game against the Chiefs in the, at the end of the first half where he was trying to make a play and it you know get the ball knocked out and uh, called the fumble and, and almost, and almost uh, they recovered it. But if the Chiefs had recovered, it could have been another. It would have been another three points on the board for the for the Chiefs at the end of the game. Um, Saints against the, um, the football team. Um, this is, this is, we're going to see if the Saints, um, what they can do with the with, uh, with Washington, or what Washington can do with the Saints. And I think that's a very interesting one. Very interesting one. When I, when I do my picks later on in the in the week, I'm going to have to figure out if they wanna, who, who, which one I'm going to choose. Um, Titans and the Jaguars. The Titans, really, they... they 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 came back uh, to, to tie the game against the Jets, but then lost it in overtime. Um, 
the Jaguars, we talked about that. You know, I had a heartbreaking loss with Cincinnati and then all this stuff now with Urban Meyer and everything like that. Titans should really, I, I, I think the Titans maybe should roll. Titans should roll this one. But speaking of rolling, the Buccaneers and the Dolphins. The Dol- like if you talked about the Dolphins, I don't know what happened to them. The Buccaneers should roll, roll the Dolphins. Um, Packers and the Bengals. I think this could be a good close game for the for the Green Bay Packers. Um, Bengals keeping it on. They're keeping their streak alive. They're three and one. You know they're you know a surprising three and one team. Uh, so we'll see what how much of a uh, how much of a game the Bengals give the Green Bay Packers. Broncos and the Steelers. Broncos not coming off their loss. The Steelers need to get back on track big time. This should be a game where you know. Teddy, and don't forget Teddy Bridgewater. He got a concussion in that game against the Ravens. So, you know, Drew Locke comes in. We'll see what Drew Locke can do. But still, just need to win this one. They need to win this one. Um, the Bears at the Raiders. My Bears. They look, you know, they look good. But it was against Detroit. They're taking on a Raider team that just lost, and they're playing in Las Vegas. Um, don't know who the starter yet. Andy Dalton, Justin Fields. Um, but either way, it's, 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 you know, they, they need to, they need to do something, you know, they need to do something because I'm telling you this right now. I'm not, I'm not a fan of the way they played. I'm not a fan of the way they played. They ran the ball, they passed the ball 17 times and ran the ball 39 times. That's not how you win, you know, that's not, that's not, that's not how you win very often in the NFL, in this NFL. You have to pass the ball. You should actually be reversed. You should pass the ball 39 times and run the ball 17 times. You know, more than likely. That's how that's how you win games. So, they're not a big fan of it. So, um, but uh, I'm sure if, if, if Justin, Justin, Justin Fields does play, that's what they're going to do because they want to protect Justin Fields. But if Andy Dalton is in there, I think Andy Dalton needs to, you know, that, you know, there needs to be a little bit more passing in that, in, in that game plan. So, uh, and I don't care who calls the plays and nothing like that. So. Um, Browns and the Chargers. This is going to be a great matchup. Baker Mayfield and the Cleveland Browns. Uh, and that defense against the Chargers and Justin Herbert. Love it. Can't wait. And hopefully, we do get to see that. Uh, that should be a very fantastic game. Giants and the Cowboys. Danny Dallas looked good. He's, he's looked good his last two games against the, the football team a couple Thursday nights ago. And then last week against the Saints. Looks very good. Maybe, they, maybe now he is now starting to get it on roll, and he is now starting to get it. And that that could be good for not only the New York Giants and their fans, but also Dave Gettleman because he's probably on a big hot seat. And if and and uh, and, 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 and the record probably doesn't matter, but it depends on how Daniel Jones. Look. If Daniel Jones looks like he is a star by the end of this year in the making, then I think. He stays, and of course, Joe Judge stays. Cowboys, obviously, they're looking to keep it rolling, and uh, Dak Prescott playing well, as well as any quarterback in the league. But he's not playing better than Kyler Murray. They're taking on the 49ers, and the Cardinals are. And uh, Kyler Murray looking to stay undefeated, looking to go to 5-0. and uh, The uh, 49ers, would it, would it be Lance? Would it be Garoppolo? We will wait and see. But I think you know, that should be a very fun game as well. Uh, Sunday night, Bills and the Chiefs. This is going to be an awesome one. The, the Bill, like we were talking about, that Bills defense has been killing it. You know, two shutouts in the past in their, in their first four games, and now but are you going to do this to the Chiefs? And we know the Chiefs have had problems. This is you know before this game, the Eagles, the Chiefs have had problems on, on you know with their offense, the offensive game. So. Would, 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 would the defense be able to stop the Chiefs enough? Uh, or and then maybe the question be reversed. Can the Chiefs defense be able to stop the Bills offense enough? Because I think the Bills offense is now starting to get on a roll. And this is this this could be a shootout. This could be a, a, a taffy pull. This could be a blowout either way. And I can't wait to see it. And then on Monday Night Football, the Colts and the Ravens, the Colts, we talked about them, they had a great Great game against uh, Miami and the Ravens just had that stuff with the with the Broncos happen. So um, Colts going back, now they've obviously been back many times since Baltimore's come into the league. But again, they're going back to Baltimore, and that always means something for those Baltimore fans. So they are going to be uh, hyped. They are going to be ready to boo, and uh, we'll see 
with Carson Wentz and uh, that offensive line. That offensive line is beat up in Indianapolis. We're going to see that offensive line get an extra day to get ready and see if they can take on the Ravens in that defense and see what Lamar, Lamar Jackson also does as well. He played very well. He played from the pocket in Denver. Let's see him keep it continue. He doesn't need to be running. He he should not he should not run for a thousand yards. He should be throwing for four thousand and should be running for about five hundred. That's where that's how it should be. Should be throwing and running. You know if, if you know if, if he if he runs for a thousand yards to me that's there's something wrong there. So uh, that's gonna be, that's the Monday Night Football game and uh, and uh, I think this is our second week with no Peyton and Eli. So. <sighs> I missed them already. All right, y'all. That is going to be it for this uh, edition of the podcast. Uh, once again, same time next week, Tuesdays. Be on the lookout for it. We're talking once again about this week in the uh, in college football. Drum roll this week in um, pro football. And talk about a couple of things probably from in Major League Baseball as well. So yeah, make sure wherever you are listening to this podcast that you continue on. You like it and you share it and you subscribe to it and you you rate it. You do everything that you want to do to it. Make sure you always come back here for it, okay? By the way, if you want to support me, there's several ways you can do so. Uh, you go to anchor.fm, so that's under Triple Show, and you can go there and you can support me. By going to being a 99 cent supporter, a $4.99 supporter, or a $9.99 supporter. Um, or you can go to patreon.com slash AJ Trip and become a patron. Once I hit a certain amount of patrons, you will be able to determine what you see on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash A Triple 20. Um, what what, what we're we talking about here on the podcast, we mostly do sports, but I can. I, I, I can go off the topic and talk about something else, maybe. <laughs> and then what you will see on my Twitch channel, if my Twitch channel can ever come back up. This fucking internet sucks down here in North Carolina. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah. And, uh, so, you do. But like, like like I always tell you, you don't have to support me financially because, you know, I, 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 I just, I'm just grateful that you decide to listen to it and share it and, and everything like that. So that's you know that's what I care about the most is you doing that for me and that's that's appreciated. That's getting me out to the world. So I uh, appreciate that so much than you more than you can imagine. And and and, and, a, and a financial uh, support would just be the cherry on top or the sprinkle on top or, or whatever you put on top. So yeah, thank you guys so much for listening. This is your boy AJ Tripp signing off. As always, be good to each other, y'all. Be careful out there. And I am out.